Uh, my name is Indapreet Singh and today's date is October 26, 2014. I was 14 years old. I was a student studying in uh, uh, the foothills of the Himalayas in India, uh, Masuri. In June of 1984, I was exactly there in, in school um, uh, in Masuri. You know, the interesting thing is uh, I, I'm probably one of the um, people who had no idea of, uh, literally no idea of what was happening in uh, Punjab in June 94, uh, 1984. I was quite isolated in school uh, at that time and no, no knowledge whatsoever of what happened in June 1984. In November of 84, uh, I was also in uh, St. George's College, Masuri, and in those days it was Uttar Pradesh. I think they've changed the states now. Um, and it was, you know, we, right kind of towards the end of the school year, um, and I was there in 1984. The day um, the violence began, uh, after the assassination of Indira Gandhi, I was still in a clueless type of state, but from where I was in uh, the campus of the school, up, you could see, you can see the Masuri downtown area from where you are in the school. It's a hilly area, and very beautiful, uh, you know, it's a tourist spot. I saw three or four fires raging and, and smoke coming out. Um, very curiously with a friend of mine, I kind of joked because no context again of what was going on. All we knew that Indira Gandhi was assassinated. What happened after that, we had no idea. Again, that isolated school environment, well protected. And I joked with my friend, the fire engines must be busy today. Uh, I remember that distinctly from 30 years ago that I mentioned that. And um, on that day, that's all I saw, but then the next week we used to get uh, 25 rupees as our pocket money, go to downtown to have a day off, and I distinctly remember some of the businesses of, you know, whom I started calling uncle, uh, sick uncles, their businesses were burnt out and, and no, one, no one was there. A very eerie feeling, still not a, you know, impactful connection as to really what, what took place. The first, the first uh, time while, while we were in school, I felt nothing. Um, and then when it was time to go home to my grandparents in New Delhi, they sent someone who works for them. Um, and that's also very strange. Why, why are they sending someone else rather than them coming? Went to Delhi um, and then met with a couple of my friends and started quickly realizing what happened. Um, my, uh, suddenly in my grandparents' home, there was a gate with with a, you know, a chain fence, much more security around their, their house, which is in South Delhi. Uh, a friend of mine came to me and right before I left for home, um, I used to live in Japan uh, and I was just in boarding school in India. Um, my friend said that his whole uh, electronics shop in Defense Colony in Delhi was burnt out but the parents never told him. Similar situation, he was in school with me. So slowly things started uh, unraveling as to what really the impact was on, on people I knew and families and relatives. And um, I think uh, as years went on, the impact became clearer um, as I uh, heard from those that have been affected, as well as the, you know, the more academic and news-oriented articles and movies and readings that, that I did. But, but the impact was definitely... Uh, gradual for the November 84 um, and then the 1984 in general impact I have a distinct uh, 90, 1991 time frame is when I started realizing uh, the, the breadth and the, and the depth of, of what went on. In the November 1984 um, personally and, per, and you know uh, immediate family no but relatives absolutely um, uh, there is not a relative or a friend that were in Delhi at that time that I know of that weren't impacted by the mobs uh, coming, uh, the organized mobs coming in, and because uh, they had, you know, uh, knowledge of where the sick households were. Very interesting story in my case, in my grandparents' uh, home case, is that the um, it's called a dhobi, the one who cleans the clothes and presses uh, presses the clothes, came running from his little hut and broke the nameplate in front of the house of my grandparents, which indicated that they were six, uh, but he broke it up and saved, uh, kind of, did what he could to save them from, from the violence. Again, 
being in a little bit more privileged environment, they were safe and had the right security or were able to go and, and but their house was definitely a target but wasn't impacted directly. On the other hand, my other relatives in northern Delhi, um, their house and factories were have been ransacked and, and it's, it's a very actually a common uh, episode in, in other Sikh households. So we're fortunate from that perspective, but unfortunate uh, from a perspective of the global Sikh family. Like I said, I didn't know and on the ground what had happened, but it was um, uh, in 1993 or so, uh, my first business trip after my career, I'm in uh, France, uh, for a business trip, and I spent a weekend at the Gurdwara in Paris, in Bobigny, uh, and I think it's still there. When I stayed the night at that Gurdwara, I also had the privilege and honor to stay with about 150 refugees from Punjab, that were basically refugees in, in that Gurdwara. And that one weekend is what really made me understand uh, what really happened in 1984. Essentially, the lives of any uh, Sikh was turned upside down, is, is what happened. And um, there were uh, minute things like, you know, no jobs, no proper, uh, uh, you know, opportunities, so they had to leave. Then there were the other ones where, because of their life was threatened, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, they would be disappeared, quote-unquote disappeared, like it has been well known and well documented, so they had to leave uh, as a result. So they were both uh, of, of those that were going on. And I got first-hand account of, of that. Um, there was one Sevadar from the Gurdwara, and, and, and the other aspect that I learned what, what happened is the, uh, you know, the way that uh, kids were transformed. He w would not have been more than 18 years old, and I asked him, well, what's, what's the next step? You know, you've come from Punjab. He goes, well, there's a group that's trying to get us to Canada so that we can then continue our life over there. But if that fails, I'm going to go back and I, and I have no other option but to die fighting. So there was, that impacted me to know that, you know, and this was in 1993, in 84, he was just a child, four or five years ago. It would have been a teenager is impacted so much by the atrocities that are taking place on his people that he's willing to go back and fight and die, uh, you know. And, uh, um, so it was obvious that, uh, and all academics and the, and the classic ones uh, have, have written that uh, they didn't go there to, you know, flush out terrorists. Uh, they went there to, quote unquote, teach a lesson or try to culturally erase uh, the impact that the six have brought to South Asia, right? So. When someone tries to do that to the Sikhs, historically it's well known that the, the, the Sikhs are going to not take it laying down and, and will, so, so the reaction was obvious, but what really happened there was a, um, something I, I believe, to be honest, truly is part and parcel of the Sikh uh, culture and the Sikh phenomena is any time individuals who are so, uh, you know, um, uh, inspired by, you know, the um, wisdom and, and the divine wisdom within the Guru Granth Sahib, they get, they get to such, such a level, they won't take things standing uh, down or, or, or laying down. And so the reaction is obvious, um, and uh, of, of the oppressor is obvious. But the counter-reaction of those that are being oppressed, but who have that inspiration, is also obvious. It's part and parcel of our, of our culture. And 1984 is just a contemporary example, I believe, truly, of what happened in the Chota Kalukara, the Vadda Kalukara, uh, th throughout our history since time of Guru Nanak, not, not just post Guru Gobind Singh Ji period. So, um, not to minimize it, that hey, it's going to happen and that, that's the way it is, but uh, it's a reminder to all six to, to stand up uh, uh, because that's our legacy. The violence um, obviously uh, was with the uh, security forces. Um, there were also those that had picked up arms um, on, on you know, our community side who may have not had the you know, discipline or the due diligence to understand what the fight meant. When someone gets so emotional 
about the atrocities on their families and friends and community, um, there's, there's a, a lot of discipline required to counteract in, in an appropriate manner. So, uh, but it was quite obvious that you know, violence was uh, uh, perpetrated by uh, the political leaders of the time uh, through the state machinery of army, police, border security forces. Um, and I have, uh, I, you know, been through um, experiences with eyewitnesses who, who have shown that, as well as our academic books and, and well-researched videos, etc., have, have all covered that. So, violence at the end of the day is not committed by any person. It's, it's the, uh, uh, violence is committed as a result of fear, uh, animosity, uh, you know, the whole gam lomo hankar idea. So, I'm not going to point fingers at who committed it, but uh, there was some, uh, you know, um, lack of uh, right going on, uh, which caused all levels of the state machinery, um, sometimes even trickled into the public uh, opinion um, on the one side, and then, you know, well-disciplined, understood uh, fighters of ours, our, our freedom fighters who were trying to mitigate those attacks, which then trickled into the public and then maybe the less disciplined ones as well. So, so things happened on both sides. My home or my residence at that time was in Japan. I was in boarding school and my brother, uh, both of us were in boarding school in India and truly it was because of the November 1984 incident uh, that our life changed and, and that our future of where we were changed. I was supposed to have come back to Missouri in, so from November is when vacation starts till March we have winter vacation. Um, and my brother was supposed to have come back to finish a college or university probably in Delhi. That never happened as a result. My grandparents, I remember distinctly telling my parents, um, it's not safe here anymore, Don't, no need to send them back. So I finished my high school in Japan directly because of, it was more expensive too, <laughs> directly because of uh, the uh, 1984 episodes. Um, since that, obviously, um, we're now here in the United States. And, uh, but I know just from my school itself, uh, four to five uh, sick students didn't come back because of the result of what happened. So may not have been a direct impact with my family immediately, but the friends and relatives and families that had to be uprooted because of the chaotic situation uh, is, is very clear and, and, and well known to a lot of people. Not until, uh, like I said, that episode in, in 1993 uh, that did I really, I mean I can't speak about what I didn't know and it was never a subject in our family in Japan. It was a very hush-hush subject in the uh, Gurdwara in Japan, there's a Gurdwara there as well. Um, so, so never that direct conversation, just something in the back of the mind that something happened. But in 1993 onwards, mm -hmm. um, many uh, of the viewers probably and, and know that um, I've spoken about it publicly, privately, I've learned about it and I continue to learn about it. No, no, nothing severe as nightmares. However, I have um, the, the feeling that I get when on occasion I have spoken to either those that have been directly impacted by it or those that were involved in the movement, um, those that showed me their scars from the torture, from the police, um, those memories of, again, I wasn't directly involved, but post-1984, being directly involved with uh, those that were uh, eyewitnesses or experienced and gone through the torture uh, cannot be erased from my mind. So, so um, and it's, it's a phenomenal, uh, for, for a large population of six, I believe, who have not, you know, reading an academic book, watching a documentary is one thing, and it becomes very emotional. But when you sit down next to someone who has gone through an experience that you can never even imagine and contemplate, that leaves an impact. And, and, and I think that's something which for many years uh, hasn't been going on. Uh, maybe you know projects like this will enable that to happen. Why did it happen to such a severe level 
and no tangible response is um, so, so the oppressor is going to do this and that is a, a kind of a law of nature but the response that the Sikhs usually gave during history was much stronger and much more quote unquote Jardikala attitude um, I believe that for a little while it may have been on the ascending but uh, the Tendikala or the descending attitude has set in place for a little while and I'm not going to analyze the pros and cons of what we can do more, what we cannot do more, but the only one thing which in my 15 to uh, 20 years of being in the Sikh community and you know engaging with these type of uh, uh, projects and activists and, and, and people, uh, the only way we are able to uh, provide a response is if we are you know well grounded in Gurbani and the Guru Granth Sahib. And why it may have happened um, are many physiological reasons, of course, but, but the main kind of uh, uh, reason is I think our connection with the Guru Granth Sahib as our foundation, with the community, the Sangats and the Panth, and the cohesiveness um, is probably why uh, the reaction was not as strong as has been in our history. But it all starts with our connection with Gurbani, uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, uh, the, and not just at the, you know, how many Akhanpats have we done, but how we really understand the divine wisdom that is enshrined in the Guru Granth Sahib has not been properly communicated uh, to us. Um, so these things will continue happening, uh, but if we can create that, those connections, uh, the response will be more appropriate. Sikh history in general has had an impact on, on my life. Um, even prior to uh, my kind of opening up my eyes and getting first-hand experience in 1993 uh, in France, um, in university when I was studying, uh, it's probably the first time I actually read a Sikh history book, you know, intently. <laughs> uh, I had to do a paper. so. Uh, but, but that really opened my eyes to, so not knowing uh, Sikh history uh, uh, was uh, something that triggered that kind of spark when I then got to understand our contemporary history, 1984 onwards, is when the spark was edging towards being a flame. <laughs> um, and so it has definitely changed uh, my attitude uh, of life and how to interpret Sikh uh, theology as well um, uh, made me gave me the impetus to study uh, um, Sikh theology through Gurbani um, history, Kirtan, and, and, and all of the other um, um, aspects that bring bring a holistic view of, of Sikhi. Um, and maybe because of what how I have changed, I probably can safely say that my family, friends, relatives have also had sometimes positive, sometimes negative uh, uh, impact as a result of that. Um, there, is no, there is no way that 1984 has not changed me as, as who I am right now. I think, uh, and I've uh, maybe said this some, in, in some way, shape or form in the past, that um, 1984, pre the episodes of 1984 and the post-1984 episodes of Sikh history um, cannot be swiped under the rug. Um, uh, and if anything, no matter what our leaning may be, right wing, left wing, you know, uh, pro-government, uh, anti-government, uh, pro-Sikhi, anti-Sikhi, you know, pro-Kesh, no-Kesh, you know, any category of Sikh that you can define out there. Um, just the, the need to learn and the need to know about history, uh, contemporary history, is, uh, I think, part and parcel, as important as knowing our Gurbani, as important as knowing our faith and traditions. Uh, I, think, I think the historical uh, narratives uh, are really what uh, make us strong. Um, recently there was a, a showing of a play, Kultar's Mind, uh, in which 
one of the uh, candidates for governor of Massachusetts was also present. After the show, um, in a, you know, having a, a discussion, uh, just, a, just a casual discussion about the impact of the show, one thing he said remains in my mind, and he is of Jewish descent, and we know that the Jews and their traditions are deeply ingrained in their history. And he said, why is there not a memorial to 1984 in New Delhi? Why could it not be a memorial in downtown Boston for 1984 with the, you know, with the scale of the massacres that took place? He goes, it doesn't matter. Uh, and, the, and the phrase that really clicks with me, he goes, memory is important. And, and I, he didn't say that explicitly, but I know that's because of his Jewish background, that they consider memory to be important. And memory needs to be important for six, and then everything can come after that, as to what type of reaction you have to do. So, memory is important uh, for six, not just as a, uh, you know, a token mantelpiece uh, that you decorate your house with, but where you really live your memory is, I think, what uh, his message was. Um, and I share that, and I've had that uh, feeling for, for a long time and projects like this and the other you know various projects that help us conserve our memory or preserve our memory so as a as a means to move forward is what I would ask uh, you know myself family friends and community to work on and, and there will be success.